Broadcasting from Sydney, Australia, this is Front and Centre with Emilio Garcia. Brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Gay marriage. Essentially, the union of two people before a government who happen to have the same type of genitalia. Yet, the issue has a moral underline. Some people believe it's overdue and necessary to allow someone to marry whoever they wish, while others believe it would have widely negative societal implications. Somewhere between the claim that gay marriage is the first domino effect to fall towards the end of civilization, and the claim that anyone who doesn't support same-sex marriage is a bigot lies the truth. We'll be exploring that truth today on Front and Center. Hello and welcome to Front and Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Today, we're going to be talking about gay marriage. This is a very relevant subject right now in Australia because the gay marriage plebiscite resulted in a landslide victory for same-sex marriage, with over 60% of the votes voting yes and 75% of the Australian population participating. Now, this is a a loaded subject, obviously, uh, with a lot of feelings on both sides. And to make any sense of the arguments on both sides, we need to take a deeper look at gay marriage's history, a look at countries with same-sex marriage since uh, they became legalized, and a look at the most popular arguments on both sides. We'll be exploring all of this after this short message. I'd like to take a second and ask you to go to theunshackled.net and download your free ebook, The Unshackled Battlefield. Learn about the founding principles of The Unshackled and what made the organization what it is today. And since I have you, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you, and now, back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center, I'm Emilio Garcia. On today's episode, we're talking about same-sex marriage. And a good place to start seems to be a brief look at its history. During the 1900s, most countries were not too friendly, legislatively speaking, with gay people. Both Australia and the US had very strict anti-gay and anti-sodomy laws. In the US, around the end of World War II, gays were even being painted as being affiliated to communism. Then, after decades of discrimination by governments, law enforcement, the military, schools, and other institutions, gay rights activists began to galvanize. Gay rights groups began to fight back, resisting arrest and demanding their rights. It wasn't all conflict though. There were exercises in normalization, protesting in suits and ties, and shifting the conversation away from sex to relationships or love. This was in an effort to take the stigma away from homosexuality. Finally, in 1977, Australia has abandoned all of its sodomy laws. In the United States, the last sodomy law was repealed in 2003. Once gays were not being persecuted, the push for marriage equality began to catalyze. In the US, it was a state-by-state fight that was ultimately standardized across the whole country by the Supreme Court. In Australia, the push catalyzed in the form of a plebiscite and a gay marriage bill is set to pass before Christmas. And they have voted overwhelmingly yes for marriage equality. And now it is up to us here in the Parliament of Australia to get on with it and get this done this year before Christmas. Now, obviously, in the greater scheme of things, this could not be a more synthesized look at gay marriage and its history. In fact, gay marriage can be seen even before Egyptian civilization. What my synthesis was made to understand is that the fight for normalization of homosexuality came first, and now we see the fight for homosexual marriage. When it comes to people that oppose same-sex marriage, they often claim that countries that have passed these laws suffer unintended consequences. We'll be taking a look at the countries that have legalized gay marriage, and if those consequences exist, right after this short break. Are you looking to improve your smile? Who isn't? A bright white set of teeth is something many covet, but few have. Now you can be one of those few with Hackner Cruise's activated charcoal tooth whitening powder. Made from premium bamboo and 100% natural ingredients, you'll see a whiter, brighter smile in as few as two days. Find out why the ancient Chinese called activated charcoal the black diamond today at hacknercruise.com. Again, that's H-A-C-K-N-E-R cruz.com. Thanks, and now back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. We just went over a very, very brief history of same-sex marriage, and we'll be moving on to explore this claim. When same-sex marriage passes as law overseas, 
this type of program become widespread and compulsory. The claim is that once same-sex marriage laws are passed, there are unintended consequences for the countries that pass it. For example, pushing indoctrinating programs such as safe schools. Let's look at the US as an example. What happened after the same-sex marriage Supreme Court decision? Did we see a safe schools type program creep into the educational system? Kind of. After five years of delays, a national education law will finally be implemented in California. It includes teaching history of the LGBT rights movement as early as second grade. Rochelle, this stems from what was called the Fair Education Act, which passed in 2011. And after two failed attempts to overturn it and some budget issues, today the State Board of Education voted unanimously for its adoption. Well, I'm disappointed because we don't need to be further trying to normalize um, sexual behaviors that are perverse. Nobody is suggesting that all of a sudden, you know, we put gay porn, you know, on TV in every classroom and say, pay attention, kiddies. I mean, that's a ridiculous reaction. It turns out the program doesn't have any sexual content in it, but many, including myself, ask if homosexual history is a proper way to go about ending issues for LGBTQ students, or if an exercise in respect and staying out of other people's business would be more effective. So this was implemented sometime after gay marriage became law in the US. Have we seen any other programs of the sort in the US, Canada, Sweden, Brazil, France, or any other country with same-sex marriage? Nope. We have not seen anything of the sort in any of these countries. The closest would be Norwegian schools, looking into how to diminish verbal abuse against their gay students. But there is no word yet as to what their proposal is going to look like. And if anybody's wondering why I didn't mention the law in Canada about jail time for misgendering people, it's because it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Gender and sexual orientation are completely different subjects, and I don't like bulking them up together. After the break, we'll dive into the centrist conclusion segment of the program, and we'll look at both sides of the argument and reach a conclusion. Did you know that Front and Center has a daily news podcast? What I'm seeing daily is a satirical daily news podcast that you can listen to in under two minutes from Monday to Friday. It's a quick and funny way to learn about global news, and you can get it every day by subscribing to the Front and Center podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or any other podcasting app. Thank you, and now back to the program. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. It's time to dive into the centrist conclusion segment of the program. Has marriage historically been between a man and a woman? No. Before the Roman Empire adopted Christianity as its official religion, homosexuality was largely normalized, and homosexual nuptial ceremonies can be traced back as far as Egypt. Is gay marriage a human right? No. The UN Human Rights Committee and the European Courts of Human Rights have found that there is no legal indication to the right to marry a person regardless of their gender. Essentially, both extremes of the argument are wrong. Marriage is not the most important fundamental pillar of society, and in westernized countries such as the US and Australia, where homosexuality is mostly accepted, an adult gay couple's abilities to sign a document has no ramifications on the rest of society. In fact, a conservative and libertarian view would be that the government has no place regulating the genital compatibility of two consenting adults that want to sign a document together. When it comes to indoctrinating programs, such as safe schools in Australia, there is room for skepticism. Many safe school advocates are using the yes vote to promote their agenda. When it comes to same-sex marriage in Australia, let's remember that most of the population participated in the vote, in which 61% of the voters claimed they were in favor of same-sex marriage. It is the will of the people. It affects only those involved in homosexual relationships, and we should respect that. That's the end of Front and Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you to The Unshackled for allowing us to use their platform. If you have any ideas or opinions, tweet at me at FRNT and Center, or find me on Facebook. I'll read the most interesting comments on the air. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, there are always two sides to the story, so keep it central. Thanks for tuning in to Front and Center. Please visit frontandcenter.net.au for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net. And keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.